Time now for a look at the days of business news. My name is Laban Cliff on Serio. Here now is what to expect. Of course, today we've just been asking ourselves right now, uh, do Kenyans really have a disliking uh, towards savings? Well, that's a question that many policymakers are mulling over following the failure of investors to snap up Emma Kiba. The offer for the 1 billion shilling bond has come to close with investors taking up 247 million. That's actually 247 million, 750,000. That's less than a quarter of the target. So bullish was the National Treasury on the prospects of the bond being snatched up. In full, that is hard to put in uh, with the prospects of a bond being snatched up. But of course, that was not the case. Now, of course, that was looking at the green shoe option the government gave. That was about 3.8 billion shillings. Well, um, now that uh, this was not the process, well, the initial launch plan of the bond was a special limited offer of about 150 million shillings, which was snapped up in uh, two days. That was before the deadline. And President Uru Kenyatta earlier today met the country's business community in a bid to assure them of the country's stability in the run-up towards the presidential election. Now, the meeting came against the heavy sell-off that has uh, taken place at the Nairobi Securities Exchange at the NSC in recent days as investors seek to forestall perceived losses. Now, a number of uh, businesses have reported lower sales as election fever picks up. The president said that uh, businesses should ignore political rhetoric and carry out trading on as normal and on the uh, ground however investors and businessmen are hard pressed to carry on with the business as usual as statistics attest and for instance the ceo of kepsa that's carol karaoke pointed out that activity at the port of mombasa has reduced and to embrace a wait and see attitude for a while and this attitude sometimes um, can, if it's prolonged, is what leads maybe to economic slowdown. We will make sure that continue the businesses as much as we can. And not only as much as we can, but to do it as best as we can. Go about your business, make your plans, project your future. This country will be here long after us noisemakers are gone. And that's what you need to get into your mind and begin to give assurance to your workers, begin to give assurance to your investors, begin to give assurance to foreign investors. Nothing in Kenya has changed. Now, it's slightly over a month since Kenyans went to the polls to elect the preferred candidates at the general election. The country is back in the campaign mode following the Supreme Court's decision of the presidential elections. But as politicians are back on their campaigns, it is the business people and the ordinary Kenyans who are feeling the economic effects of the heated political atmosphere, as Gabriel Kudaka reports. Five months ago, this construction site would have been a beehive of activity with the roaring sounds of tractors and trucks forming part of the ambience. But that is not the case anymore. Only a few workers can be spotted here, some basking in the sun while waiting for clients. We've been having a lot of clients uh, in our businesses, but uh, it, comes at, it reaches a, a time uh, where we don't have business at all. Uh, our clients are just telling us just to hold and uh, we will do business after elections. Some keys construction company normally has 80 employees, but the proprietor has since reduced that number to 20 who are on standby should a client walk in requesting for building blocks alongside other materials. <laughs> Several vehicles are now parked in the yard with minimal activity taking place. This mechanic here taking the advantage to service them. It is not clear how long it will take before the situation returns to normalcy after the presidential election slated for October 17th. The hospitality sector has not been spared either. <laughs> Biashara imeenda chini kutoka 100% au 8 imeenda mpaka 20%. Na ikisidi iende 
sasa ni kufunga tutafunga mabiashara for now the businesses across the country will continue feeling the heat of the electoral campaigns even as kenyans hope that the integrity of the entire process will be upheld gabriel kudaka ntv wasingishu county Speaking about businesses are feeling the heat, a number of uh, drivers of ride-hailing cab service uh, firms, that's Uber, Taxify, Little Cub and Mondo, went on strike mid this morning, protesting what they say are low fares that have rendered the services uneconomical. The drivers decry the minimum fares as being too low and are accusing the firms of failing to consult them on uh, pricing concerns. They also cite delays in getting paid uh, in instances where clients pay via debt cards and also drivers who who switched off their apps converged at the Nairobi Urus Park and of course proceeded to City Hall to seek audience with Governor Mike Sonko. The strike was organized by drivers of online taxi hailing firms from Nairobi as their counterparts in other cities carried out with businesses as usual. Not all the drivers of the four companies took part in the strike, although customers in some parts of the city had to contend with high fares as the strike progressed. Now, a new model of tuk-tuk designed with luxury in mind has been unveiled at the cost by car in general in partnership with the Piaggio company. The new tuk-tuk christened ape romance, meaning a three-wheeler for romance, was launched at the Makadara grounds where hundreds of tuk-tuk operators were in attendance. The new model costs, costs about 430 shillings compared to other brands that retail for about 360,000 shillings. Now, at least 7,000 tuk-tuks operate within Mombasa City employing some 20,000 youth directly and indirectly. Ape Romanza Piaggio tuna target haswa wa tour list. Tumeona kuna juhudi mingi sana from the county na sadikari ku to promote tourism in Mombasa. And we want to support that effort by bringing it on board aina ya tuktu kenyana support hii mambo ya tourism. Na ndiyo mwana wa leo tukona aina ya ape Romanza which is convertible. When I found what I know about you, which I want to please be sorry, Sana. So how is it using your M-Pesa service today? Well, a number of Safaricom's uh, customers face challenges using the Lipa and M-Pesa platform hours after the telco restored M-Pesa services following a system upgrade. Now, the largely successful upgrade was meant to broaden the scope of M-Pesa's operations and its services. Now, it commenced that on Saturday at about 10 o'clock and went up to noon yesterday. Now, according to a senior official at the telco, only a few of the telco's customers had problems using Lipa and M-Pesa, pointing out that the setback was not widespread. So, well, as the company says the system is back in operation and everything is back to normal and just before i wrap up of course as usual we wrap up like this looking at what to expect in your copy of tomorrow's business daily a resounding messages from of course the banking sector in the adverse effects of the interest rate caps tell you what they have actually lost 26 billion shillings due to legislation making it counterproductive as it was meant to make credit more affordable to small-scale industries more details on that and how much of course they've lost and just looking at uh, what's ahead for the banking sector on your copy of the Business Daily tomorrow. That's it for business. My name is Laban Cliff on Serious. Stay tuned. My colleagues will be back with a lot more.